Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. One of the things that are commonly found in nature are symbiotic relationships. Two or more very different species living or working together for the benefit of all involved. And such relationships exist between different industries in human civilization, despite they being quite different. The automotive industry has benefited from working with the news media industry and vice versa. So today, we're going to take a brief romp through history and look at how the news developed and came to help build up car culture. So, of course, we'll begin in the Stone Age. The sharing of new ideas, technologies, and important events are as old as humanity itself. Spoken languages and art were both important in spreading news, although rather slowly. Paintings and carvings have been found in archaeological digs across the world that often depict certain weapons and even strategies for hunting and early warfare. Additionally, oral traditions were passed down from one generation to another, and of course, when wandering tribes met, there was often an exchange of information. Writing was a game-changer during the Bronze Age. The ability to record information through stone carvings, clay tablets, and even early forms of paper is at least 4,000 years old. Yet the spreading of news across the land was still not an easy task. It still required someone to carry the information elsewhere, and both clay and stone were a bit heavy. Yet it was still done. Early civilizations across the world developed systems of delivering mail, which spread the news that the mailman carried. Through these Bronze Age and Early Iron Age mail systems were primarily for government use, private mail systems did exist, carrying papyrus scrolls and small clay tablets containing financial information, events from home, and other bits of news. Some 2,000 years ago, in both China and the Roman Empire, the concept of the newspaper came into being. But they weren't newspapers like we think of them today. Rather, the news was written on a scroll, let's say, for example, a notice of war being declared and a call to arms and taxes. And this scroll, as well as some copies of it, were sent to the main cities throughout the land. These scrolls would be put into the hands of the world's first media moguls, the town criers. They would go to a public forum of some kind, a temple, the marketplace, the city gates, or wherever, and proclaim whatever was on the scroll. Then the scroll would be sent to the next town. It could still take weeks or even months to get the word out, but it worked. Paper came about at about the same time. Prior to this, scrolls would be made from papyrus, parchment, or vellum, though vellum is just a variety of parchment, which are both made from animal skins. Making paper from wood pulp was invented in China during the Han Dynasty some 2,000 years ago, and the secrets of its manufacture slowly spread across the world through the news. By the beginning of the first millennium AD, Modern paper was readily available throughout Asia, Europe, and the Middle East, which the various larvae of moths and beetles, collectively known as bookworms, also benefited from. It was Johannes Gutenberg that, about the year 1440 in Germany, invented the first modern printing press. Now, printing had been around for centuries before this. Chinese printing blocks are about as old as paper itself each being carved from wood or soft stone and could transfer whatever image or writing was on them en masse. What Gutenberg did was make a machine that could print any writing you wanted. It had movable type. Though first used to print Bibles, over the next dozen or so decades, the printing press would be improved, becoming more efficient and easier to change what it printed, which would lead to the first true newspapers. Throughout Europe of the 16th and 17th centuries, Small publishers were called upon by their magistrates to print periodicals or gazettes to make available to their local populations. The news found in them was, of course, dictated by the government and were targeted towards the more affluent persons. Yet their existence began to drive education and literacy across the civilized world, which in turn would be a significant factor, perhaps even the catalyst, of what would become known as the Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution. The Enlightenment brought with it 
the proliferation of a concept of a free press. England was the first to legislate such freedom in the mid-17th century, but within a hundred years, small independent publishers were pumping out books, newspapers, gazettes, and almanacs filled with stories and articles that were not under government censorship or regulation. They even allowed private citizens to write their opinions, the letters to the editor that we know today, and also sold space on their newspapers to businesses, the advent of advertising. Yet to this point, even the free press papers of the late 18th century were limited by two factors. First, they were expensive to print, so the price at the newsstand made them inaccessible to the common wage earner. The other issue was how fast news could travel. Getting information across the world required couriers of some sort, and thus most of the newspapers were in the significantly sized towns and cities of the time, and focused their efforts on local affairs. News from abroad would eventually arrive, but it could take weeks or months before it made the headlines. And it was the Industrial Revolution that addressed both problems. The steam engine came to the news media with, you guessed it, steam-powered printing presses and paper rolling machines. With the manufacturing of paper being able to become mechanized, the paper itself became cheap enough to mass produce, and by the 1830s, newspapers could be made that the man in the street could buy with pocket change. Newspapers became flooded with advertisements, special interest columns, local police reports and trials, sporting event reporting. Any eye-catching headline would do. And the steam printing presses could print thousands of newspapers an hour. But the news needs to spread as fast as possible, which is where another invention of the Industrial Revolution, the telegraph, taps in. Telegraphy is actually quite ancient though was initially either audible or visual, using smoke signals, drums, mirrors, and such. Visual telegraphy was fairly widespread by the late 18th century, using towers topped with signal flags and telescopes, the origins of what we know as semaphore. Unfortunately, this method does require a line of sight and many repeating towers, and the whole system can be undone by fog or heavy rain. Electricity solved these issues. Experiments in electrical data transmission began at the turn of the 19th century, and by the 1830s, practical, functional telegraph devices had been invented that could transmit information nearly in real time. No one person invented the electric telegraph. It was the accumulation of the work of many inventors, Alessandro Volta, William Sturgeon, Michael Faraday, and Joseph Henry, just to name a few though it was Samuel Morse that made it all practical by devising what we now know as Morse code. These series of dots and dashes, long tones and short tones, allowed words to be transmitted in a linear fashion across many miles, even thousands of miles, and be read on receiving end just as fast as they were sent. This revolutionized the news industry. By the 1860s, telegraph wires had spread around the world, creating the foundation of the information age to come. An event that occurred on Friday night in Paris, France, could be on the headlines of newspapers in San Francisco by Saturday morning. Newspaper publishers now had access to news from around the world pretty much as it happened, and the juicier the story, the better. News stories became commodities themselves amongst newspapers, and the publishers began trading in these commodities. This led to the creation of news agencies. Newspapers would send out their mild-mannered reporters to gather the news that they feel will sell newspapers. They would partner with other publishers to pool their resources and share the results and expenses. Of course, publishers that are not in their group could also print the stories for a fee. These early agencies grew quickly in both wealth and power, and most still exist today. For example, the Associated Press, Reuters, Wolf, and the AFP. By the 1880s, newspaper publishers were a government unto themselves. They gathered fresh stories and sold them to the public, and thus could influence large populations through what news they shared. But what do you do on a slow news day? You need to give something fresh to the public. And so newspaper publishers began to create news themselves. Sporting events, if properly promoted, are newsworthy. And unlike murders, natural disasters, and war, can be done on a regular schedule. And in 1888, a car was in the news. Bertha Benz in Germany made a road trip in her husband's car, which happened to be a Benz patent motor vehicle. 
This news got picked up by Reuters and spread across the globe. The following year, the Paris Expedition had a section dedicated to newfangled automobiles, and various new agencies wrote stories about them, some praising the new technology, some snubbing it, and some being moderate. But they got press, and the public wanted to hear more about cars. In the mid-1890s, the publishers started the sport of auto racing. It began in France, being sponsored in 1894 by the paper Le Petit. They created the race and wrote the various stories associated with it, and it went through the AFP news agency and from there across the world. Both the newspaper and the agency made money from the race, so it was a serious win-win. True, a certain Count de Dion wasn't happy about the outcome, and thus auto racing organizations would eventually be established. To put it bluntly, the news media created car racing because they could. Car racing is a sporting event, and when the media sponsored them, they could at the same time get paid by the public to make the race exciting news. Auto racing spread like wildfire across the globe, and reporters from various news agencies would be there, ready to sell the first results and juicy tidbits from the finish line. Today, we may still read about races in the paper, though most likely we will watch them on TV or online. But they're one and the same. It's the news media, and car racing was created by the very industry that broadcasts you the live footage of the action. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.